Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatih ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار praise be to allah we praise him and we seek his help and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and the consequences of our evil deeds. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever he leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is no deity, no object worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with no partner or associate. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. We have been discussing the sins of our tongues because of the hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said that the servant speaks words, the consequences of which he does not realize and for which he is sent down into the depths of the hellfire further than the distance between the east and the west. And especially in the month of Ramadan, because of the hadith in Sayyid al-Bukhari from Abu Hurairah radiallahu an that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever does not give up false speech and acting upon it in ignorance, Allah has no need of him giving up his food and drink. Meaning that our speech, our actions can end up wasting our fasting even in the month of Ramadan. So we have discussed speaking about Allah without knowledge and how the words that we speak can lead to shirk associating partners with Allah over the past several classes. And today, inshallah, is our last class with some seemingly harmless uses of the tongue, which can have disastrous consequences. And the first topic that we're going to cover today is jesting or joking. And what is hated about joking is continuous, as well as making up stories, lying, and propagating half-truths, meaning distorting something or making a mountain out of a molehill. And you do all of this to make somebody else laugh. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and subhanAllah, this hadith should scare all of us. Woe to the person who speaks lies to make people laugh. Woe to him. Woe to him. This is a serious warning. But if we control ourselves, we only joke sometimes. It's Our, our, our words are truthful. We're not making up lies and not making up stories. It's not done to hurt somebody. You're not excessive in it. Then it is fine. And there is no harm, inshallah. The Prophet ﷺ himself used to joke. And when the Prophet and when the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they they asked that old Prophet of Allah, وسلم, you joke with us. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Indeed, I joke, but I only speak what is true. And that is what is critically important for us. As a Muslim, it is not befitting for a Muslim to be speaking lies, regardless of what our excuse or our thoughts may be behind it. And most of the time, most of the time, you will find that people will say, but I was just joking. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if you know what I know, you would laugh less and weep a lot. You would cry a lot. And think we should think about our situation. How often are we crying, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How often are we crying and shedding tears, asking Allah to forgive us our sins and repenting from our sins? 
And so if you continue in, 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 in indulging and joking excessively, this is play and amusement. And being excessive in this, excessive laughter, it can kill the heart. The Prophet wasallam he said, and do not laugh excessively because excessive laughter kills the heart. And meanwhile, people will pay money to go watch people nonstop making jokes to try and make them laugh. Getting to the point where what, what people call having a belly laugh, where your stomach starts to hurt from laughing so much. And this is not acceptable. Another topic is excessive speech, where the tongue is misused. And this means that we're engaged in speech in which there is no need to concern yourself with. You're being excessive in expressing yourself, speaking more than is required. And so in cases where there is a need for somebody to express themselves, then stick to what is the minimum required for you to say to get the point across. And to exceed that, to keep going, to keep reiterating, to keep expanding, then this is what is excessive. And this is a negative attitude that whoever's involved in it, you may not be accruing sins, but that time that you spend speaking excessive words, especially things that don't matter, don't impact anything, don't benefit anybody, then you could have spent that time more productively doing something better, something that will get you rewards with Allah. The Salaf, they used to hate excessive speech. And they considered anything excessive other than speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, it's, and, and speaking about forbidding evil and commanding what is right and what is good. Then there is engaging in vain speech. And this is perhaps even worse than the previous topics where we speak vainly about topics and this is incurring sin. Ibn Masood, radiallahu an, he said that the man with the most mistakes on the day of judgment is the one who engages most in vain speech. Subhanallah. You know, we all often think of our shortcomings. And if somebody points out our shortcomings in worshiping Allah, we say, Alhamdulillah, at least I'm not committing murder. At least I'm not stealing. At least I'm not committing zina. At least I'm not drinking khamar alcohol or intoxicants. The man with the most mistakes on the day of judgment didn't mention any of those major sins is the one who engages most in vain speech. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Surah 23, the first three ayat, what could mean successfully indeed are the believers, those who offer their prayers with full submissiveness and those who turn away from a lahu, from dirty, false, evil, vain speech, falsehood, lying, all of these things, all of it related to what we speak. The people who are successful are those who observe their prayers and are careful of their speech. In Surah Al-Nisa, Surah number 4, Ayat number 140, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what could mean. And it has already been revealed to you in the book, meaning the Quran, that when you hear the verses of Allah being denied and mocked at, then sit not with them until they engage in a talk other than that. In another ayah in Surah Mudathir, Surah number 40, ayat number 46, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what could mean the pious in Jannah, in paradise, will ask one another about those that are guilty, those in the hellfire. What caused you to enter hell? And they will say, we were not of those who used to offer prayers, nor did we feed the poor. And we used to talk falsehood, everything that Allah hated. And we used to talk falsehood with those that speaks with vain speech and we used to belie the day of judgment subhanallah ask yourself are you do you meet any of these criteria because if we have even one of these we need to be careful we need to get ourselves out of this because these are the qualities of the people that will be in the hellfire the next category is boasting the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has revealed to me 
that you should be humble so that no person would oppress another and neither would there be anyone displaying pride or boast to one another. And how often are we boasting about ourselves? In fact, going to the extent of people referring to themselves as the greatest of all time in various things that they are engaged in. And then there is one which is a very common, very common sight. And I see this often when I am performing Salatul Jum'ah and leading because I am there facing the people that are sitting. And you can see people speaking during the khutbah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, whoever says, be quiet to his brother while the Imam is addressing the people, meaning the khutbah, he's delivering the khutbah, on the day of Jum'ah, has done an evil act. Imagine, we know it is prohibited to speak while the khutbah is being delivered, regardless of whether you understand the language or not. You cannot speak. But imagine, somebody else is speaking, and you wanting to command the good, forbid the evil, you tell this person to be quiet. You're doing a good thing. You're doing something that you should be doing. But the gravity of speaking during the khutbah, while the imam is delivering the khutbah, it is such a great matter that even this is not considered a noble act. And in fact, it is sinful. Abu Darda, radiallahu anhi, says that the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was on the mimbar addressing the people. And he was reciting a particular ayah. And Ubay ibn Qab, radiallahu anhu, was sitting next to me. So I asked him, when was this ayah revealed? Imagine, these are two sahaba sitting in the presence of the Prophet وسلم, giving the khutbah for Jum'ah. And he wants to learn. This is not vain speech. This is not him making a joke. He wants to understand. He wants to ask this other sahaba, when was this ayah revealed? But Ubay ibn Kaab he refused to speak to me until the Prophet وسلم, came down from the mimbar, meaning the khutbah is completed. And he said to him, you have nothing from this Jum'ah Salah except your vain speech. And when the Prophet وسلم, finished the Salah, I went to him and I informed him of what happened. And the Prophet وسلم, he said, Obey has spoken the truth. If you hear the Imam speaking, be quiet until he is finished. Meaning not even telling somebody else to be quiet. Subhanallah. And how unmindful and unheedful are we of this? We see people all the time. You're sitting there quietly listening and a friend walks in, walks by you, shakes your hand, you give him the salam. Or he gives you the salam, you return the salam. Thinking, of course, I have to return salam. Not in this case. Not at this time. Then there is the prohibition to use respectable titles for people which are hypocrites and innovators. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, do not address a hypocrite by using respectable titles like sir or master or any of their, their titles, even if it is, it is their, their actual title, because you will arouse the anger of your Lord, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Moving on to the next topic, and that is blasphemy and insulting and ridiculing and abusing and we spoke about this a couple of classes ago, two or three classes ago, that it is prohibited to insult or abuse or, or blaspheme Allah to show disrespect in any way. Or the Prophet وسلم, or the religion of Al-Islam or the Quran or anything else related to Al-Islam. And all of this can lead to kufr, disbelief. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Tawbah, in Surah, uh, Surah number 9, ayahs number 65 and 66, what could mean, if you ask them about this, they declare, we are only talking idly and joking. Say, was it Allah and his ayat and his messenger that you were mocking? Make no excuse. You have disbelieved after you had believed. And in the tafsir, tafsir of Ibn Kathir, the, the Ibn Umar, and, and others, they narrate that when they were on the campaign of Tabuk, a man came up to them and he said, we have seen no people with greater appetites and more lying or cowardly in battle 
than the Prophet وسلم, and his reciting companions. Aus ibn Malik radiallahu anhi got up and he said, it is rather you who are the liar. You are a munafik. You are a hypocrite pretending to be a Muslim. I shall tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam about you. And so Aus ibn Malik radiallahu anhi went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he told him. But before he could tell him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And so when the man heard about this, the man who said these evil words, he jumped on his camel. And he was racing towards the Prophet ﷺ saying, but we were only joking, trying to pass the time while traveling. Ibn Umar says that he was clinging to the saddle of the, of the, of the camel of the Prophet ﷺ as it ran and his feet and legs being battered. And he's repeating, but we were only joking in the Prophet ﷺ insisting without turning his face to them, not even looking at them, saying, joking, joking with Allah, with his revelation and with his prophet. Subhanallah. And today we see sometimes people, Muslims, on the comedy circuit, making fun, mockery, joking about Al-Islam, about people with beards or women with niqab or wearing hijab or anything else from the religion of Al-Islam to make people laugh. As if them mocking it wasn't bad enough, eh, they're doing it to make people laugh. How often do we do it ourselves or we see or hear other people do it? It is not permitted for us to even sit with them or listen to them or laugh at with them. In fact, we should scold them and we should remove ourselves from that environment. It is even prohibited for us to abuse or blaspheme the Sahaba radiallahu anhum the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in fact, he said, may Allah curse the one who abuses or blasphemes my companions. In another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not insult or blaspheme my companions. For by the one in whose hand is my soul, if one of you spend like, like the mountain of Uhud in gold, in Allah's path, you would not equal their support or even half of their support. Imagine if you had that much gold, the size of Mount Ohad, a mountain of gold, literally, and you gave it as charity, as sadaqa. You can't even come close to half of what a sahaba has earned. And yet, people who claim to be Muslim abuse, abuse, use abusive language against some of the greatest sahaba. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Umar radiallahu an, and others. And as if that's not bad enough, you find other Muslims who may not be blaspheming or abusing the Sahaba, but the ones that do, they call them their own brothers. They say, these are like my brothers. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the Muslim is the one from whom other Muslims are safe from his hand and his tongue. Also, it is prohibited to abuse or blaspheme those that have passed away. And sometimes people speak ill and horribly say bad things about people that have passed away. The Prophet ﷺ said, do not abuse or blaspheme the dead. It is also prohibited to insult or blaspheme what the disbelievers worship other than Allah. We know that they are false gods. But we still can't blaspheme them. We still can't insult them. In Surah Al-Anam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in ayat number 108 what could mean. And insult not those whom they, meaning the disbelievers, worship besides Allah, unless that they insult Allah wrongfully without knowledge. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, do not cause harm to the Muslim because of insult or abuse to a disbeliever. And then there is the prohibition of abusing the wind. Subhanallah. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, do not abuse or blaspheme the whim because it circulates from Allah. It brings mercy and punishment. However, ask Allah for its good and seek refuge from Allah, with Allah from its evil. And how many times do we hear people saying bad things about the weather in general, whether it is rain or snow or ice or wind or whatever the case may be? These are all things from Allah. 
We can't say horrible things about it. Allah, in his infinite wisdom, causes it to happen. We may not understand why, but that doesn't give us any right to abuse it. In fact, it is prohibited for us to abuse or blaspheme a rooster. The Prophet ﷺ said, do not abuse or blaspheme the rooster because it wakes up people for the Salahs or Salat al-Fajr. And then of abusing or blaspheming time, the Prophet ﷺ said, do not abuse or blaspheme time. And how often do people curse time? One, we're always seeking to kill time, wasting our time, as if that wasn't bad enough. Then people speak ill about it. Again, time is something that Allah has created. And then there is the fever. SubhanAllah. Even if you have a fever, the Prophet wasallam he came upon Ummah uh, um Sahib uh, and, and said to her, what is the matter with you that you are trembling? And she said, I have a fever. There is no blessing of Allah in it. Now imagine, SubhanAllah, listen to the language. Imagine how what words we would use to describe our pain from a fever or our body aches from a fever. All she said, radiallahu anha, all she said was there is no blessing of Allah in it, in the fever. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not blaspheme fever because it wipes out the sins of the children of Adam just as the bellows extract dirt from iron. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. With this being the seventh and final lesson about the sins of the tongue, I want to go back to the beginning. Each and every one of us is seeking the pleasure of Allah. Each and every one of us wants the ultimate success of reaching Jannah, paradise. But one of the main factors that causes us to fail is the misuse of our tongues. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, do you know who the bankrupt person is? And the Sahaba, radiallahu anh, they said, a bankrupt, a bankrupt person amongst us is the one who has no money and has no provision. And while from a dunya perspective, they are correct, that's not what the Prophet ﷺ was asking. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that the bankrupt in my ummah, meaning the Muslims, is the one who comes on the day of judgment with salah, with fasting. And zakat. And that's why we're speaking about this before I continue the hadith, because that's what we're doing. Majority of Muslims, even if they don't do any of this throughout the year in the month of Ramadan, they are praying, they are they are praying their salah, they are fasting, and most Muslims are giving their zakat in the month of Ramadan. But he also comes having blasphemed this person, slandered and vilified this person. And the, uh, I, uh, the, the hadith goes on, ate the wealth of this one and spilled the blood of this one and hitting this one. So on the day of judgment, his good deeds will be given to those people that he abused. And if his good deeds are completely consumed, meaning you have nothing left, all of your good deeds have been given away and the scales of justice are not balanced, then their evil deeds will be given to you until eventually he will be thrown into the fire of hell. May Allah protect us from this. This is such a dangerous piece of flesh that we have in our body, the tongue. It never tires. You can keep speaking and speaking and speaking. Your jaw may get tired. Your throat may become dry, but your tongue never gets tired. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, whoever can guarantee what is between his jaws, referring to the tongue, and what is between his legs, referring to the private parts, I will guarantee him Jannah. Paradise. It doesn't get any better than that. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him speak good or remain silent. And that is what this topic was about, sacred silence, because we need to control our speech, because that is something that can harm us without us even realizing it. As we conclude this series, I hope that it served as a reminder for all of us, and I hope that we all understand the magnitude 
of our speech. I hope we all understand that it is one of the main causes of people to be thrown into the fire of hell. It is the evil reapings of our tongue. Because perhaps this one body part, our tongue, can commit more sins than any other body part that we have. And it can destroy all of our good deeds. So if we can restrain our tongues, then inshallah we will succeed. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us understand the importance of restraining our tongue and help us to implement it. I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the magnitude of the words that we speak and to save us from uttering words which we will regret in this dunya and the akhirah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us control our tongues and forgive us for what we have said incorrectly. I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to practice the perfect and complete deen of al-Islam according to the Quran and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will still continue with these classes inshallah on Wednesday. And Friday being the last two classes, we will be speaking about the last 10 nights of Ramadan and the end of Ramadan, insha'Allah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa jazakumullahu khairan. Wa barakallahu fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.